All right, guys, now today uh, we're going to be talking about getting your Amiga computer hooked up to the internet, uh, specifically the uh, old classic Amigas like my A1200 behind me, which is uh, currently showing a bit of Pinball Fantasies. Been having a few games, still a brilliant game. I should play that on my iPhone as well. I don't know if you've tried it on iOS, just as good. Uh, so there is actually a book I've been reading recently, which is called Connect Your Amiga by uh, Dale Larson's. Now, uh, this is really interesting from an historical perspective as it came out, I think it was around 94, uh, right at the start of kind of the World Wide Web revolution. A lot of it is very outdated by today's standards, um, as is the Amiga, obviously. Uh, it concentrates on like bulletin boards and dial-up services. You know, historically, it's an interesting read, but there is also some... Uh, Still, you know, relevant information if you want to get your old machine online, particularly to uh, web surfing, if you know, ignore all the stuff about the software, like, you know, downloading Mosaic and all that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can get it off Amazon for a couple of quid. It's quite cheap. Uh, but today, I'm going to talk through uh, the hardware that you'll need to get your Amiga 1200 online, and I'll show you a bit of the uh, software that's available for it that you'll need. And also, we'll talk a bit about internet software for the next generation Amiga OS is like uh, OS4, AROS and Morph OS as well. Now to start with, my Amiga 1200 um, is connected to the internet using this little baby here. Now, thank you Commodore for putting the PCMCIA port on the Amiga. That means that we can use very cheap components like this to get our Amiga 1200s and 600s online. Um, now, if you've got a big box Amiga that uses Zorro slots, there are Ethernet cards available. Be expected to pay more than a few quid, unlike these. Uh, obviously, you know, proprietary Amiga hardware is pretty pricey these days, so unfortunately, it probably ain't going to be cheap to get your Amiga 3000 or 4000 online. But if you're lucky enough to have an Amiga 1200 lying around, you can get it online for pennies. Now, uh, this card that I've got is a CNET CN PC card Ethernet adapter. It is literally a standard PCMCIA 16-bit card with this little dongle attached to the end of it. And on the end of there, as you can see, we've got uh, an Ethernet port. And there's also the old style of uh, networking. I'm sure it's got the name of. Is it Bnet or no, whatever. <laughs> that thing anyway. You know what I mean. The one you got to screw in. Uh, so literally, it's a simple case of hooking that into the uh, slot on the side of your Amiga there. And then you plug the Ethernet wire, uh, which I've got running into an Ethernet switch. You can have it directly into your router as well. And then, as you can see, the uh, link light comes on to show that we've got an established link to the router. Um, and also that little light next to it is a transmit and receive light. It really is as simple as that, really. That's all the hardware that you need to get an Amiga 1200 online. Uh, so now I'll reset this, we'll quit Pinball Dreams, and I'll show you some of the software that I use online with my Amiga 1200. All right, now we're looking at my um, Amiga 1200 workbench running uh, OS 3.9. While I'm here, actually, I can take a quick moment to show you the uh, Indivision AGA, uh, the scan doubler that I did an unboxing video about a few months ago, if you remember. Um, I've had a few people contact me going, uh, what was the point in that, you know, what does it even do if you can display on your monitor anyway with RGB to SCART? Well, I can show you an example, and it kind of ties into this video because um, for web surfing in particular, it gives you a bit more screen real estate. So if you've got an Indivision AGA, um, check my old video if you're not sure what that is. You can use one of the new uh, high GFX screen modes. For example, this one will give me 1024 by 768. So if we use that, now it'll go out of range for the uh, connection I've got here. So we'll need to flip my screen to the DVI input from the Indivision. Give it a minute to sort itself out. There we go. And as you can see, we've got, you know, a much higher resolution screen, a lot more space to work with as well. So uh, for web browsing, it's um, it's a lot more comfortable. And for reading email and things like that, I mean, it gives you just a lot more space if you've got one of these uh, Indivision AGAs. So as you can see, my workbench has got a lot more room on it now. For the purposes of this video, though, what I'm gonna do is uh, stick to the standard PAL high-res interlace mode. As I figured that's probably what most people will be using. It looks a bit more authentic as well as, you know, that's what we used on the Amiga mainly uh, back in the 90s when we were doing this. And also it's a little bit easier to see on video as things are a little bit larger. So we're back on the RGB output here. 
Uh, connected via SCART, I've showed you a few times my video setup. Uh, right, so what we need to do first of all is get a TCP IP stack running so that we can uh, get the machine online. Now, I've plugged in the, uh, the adapter to the, uh, the PCMCIA to Ethernet adapter, as mentioned a few moments ago. Uh, we'll give Workbench a minute to finish booting. Now, Newsrog that we've got here is actually a Usenet client. I have it set to um, load up on boot. I mean, Usenet was kind of something I used to spend quite a lot of time on back in the 90s, but today it's mainly filled with spam, really, isn't it? Or, uh, you know, for binaries, it has its uses, but it's still kind of there, you know, for historical reasons, I suppose. So, uh, first of all, we need a, a TCP stack running. Now, if I go into my internet directory here, there are a few different ones, actually. Let's clean that up quickly. Now, probably the most popular one on the Classic Amiga is Miami, or uh, Miami DX, which I think stood for Miami Dulux. Now, this was a commercial product, but I don't think it's been sold for quite a long time. Um, I think it was by a company called Vapor. I think Vapor did this, if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, you can find a copy of this pretty much on... Uh, if you do Google search for the fully registered version, I'd be very surprised if you didn't, didn't come across it, put it that way. Now, configuring Miami DX is pretty simple. It really, um, you know, when you get the the driver for the Ethernet stack, which is the main thing that you're going to need, and I'll talk you through that in a moment. We'll put a few links in the video as well. But Miami, it's simply a case of following one of the many online guides to uh, setting up things like your uh, gateway and your... Uh, your router IP address and all that kind of thing. It can do this actually all automatically if you wanted it to. Um, the only thing is I find Miami Dulux a little bit heavyweight for my uh, classic Amiga setup. A lot of people will disagree with me, but I'll show you what I use in a moment. There's actually a new um, TCP stack that's been released, which is called Roadshow uh, for the classic Amiga and for MorphOS as well. Now, there's not really much to look at here because uh, it's actually um, mostly done in the command line but it will give you quite a big boost over the uh, old Amiga stacks, apparently. Now, I've not had a chance to really play with it yet, as it only got released a couple of days ago, um, but I've heard reports that apparently it's around, you know, four to five times faster than Miami, for example, so it will be something I'll be having a go at. It is 20 euros if you want to buy it, though, but it's available for uh, the old classic Amigas and for Morpho S as well. Now, what I actually use is a version of uh, AMI TCP um, bundled in a package called Genesis. Now, when you've configured it, which I'll show you how you do quickly. Uh, I was going to here, find the, the draw for that. There we go. There is a wizard that can do it automatically for you. So literally, it's, you know, connect. Do you want to connect via modem or network? Literally, just, you know, answer the questions, put in your, uh, your DNS address and your gateway and all that kind of thing. That's pretty much it, really. Then when you've done all that, you'll get this little interface here. Click online. It's as simple as that. We're now online. So we can minimize that. And we can open up a web browser. Now, there are a few available for the classic Amiga platform. Uh, by far, I think the most fully featured one is iBrowse that I've got open here. Um, now, iBrowse is it's a pretty old browser by today's standards. Uh, the version information you saw there was from 2006, but really it's just a slightly tweaked version of the old uh, 1999 browser. So we're talking a lot of the things that you'll be used to today online, uh, things like CSS table layouts, for example, they're not present in iBrowse and they're not actually on any classic Amiga web browsers. So uh, the web can look a little bit funky if, uh, if you're using a CSS site or something that expects a, uh, a modern browser that supports all that kind of thing. It does have some old JavaScript support. There's no Flash, there's no full Java. Um, but you know, for browsing the old, old Amiga websites like this, you know, it's not too bad actually. You know, even if it's only for a little bit of novelty. And it may be bringing back a few memories. This is how the internet looked when we first got on it back in the mid 90s. <laughs> Uh, one thing it does actually have, though, is um, tabbed browsing, which I don't even think came to Internet Explorer until about version 7. So it was a good 10 years ahead of that, at least. So we can open Aminet in here as well. Um, you know, it is quite slow, but we're talking, you know, this machine is a 28 megahertz machine with around 60 megabytes of RAM. So, you know, you're not going to get the performance that you'll get off your uh, Windows-based Core i7 machine. 
Uh, but, I mean, you might be asking, what's the point in having it online? Well, there's a novelty factor of it as well. Uh, but really, I mean, the main reason I use it is, you know, Aminet here, which is a uh, basically a big collection of Amiga software that still gets, you know, regular things uploaded to it. These are the last seven days. You can download things directly to your Amiga. So there we go. I click that. We can download that to my RAM disk. There we go. Pull this down. Uh, and that should be on my RAM disk that I've got here. There we go. The archive I downloaded. So there we go. It's the first uh, download that I've done on this machine in front of your eyes. Uh, the reason that you know you might want to do it is to save you having to transfer files from other machines in your house via compact flash card or floppy disks. You can download to the Amiga. Now speaking of that, there's also quite a fully featured FTP client. My favourite one. There is quite a lot of them actually for the Amiga. I like Ami Trade Center. As you can see, I've got a lot of shortcuts configured here. Um, the EAB file server is brilliant for abandonware, and a few of the programs I've mentioned already, you'll get full versions of them, and uh, a lot of kind of abandoned Amiga commercial software you'll find on the EAB file server, English Amiga board. Um, so, you know, FTP is standard FTP really. There's also, you know, Commodore 64 and everything software in here too. So it's a pretty good uh, repository for classic Amiga and Commodore software. So I could download the README there for example. I'll come straight down. Should be in my RAM disk now as well. Yep, there we go. Uh, there's an IRC client. There's a few of those. There's Grapevine. There's WikiChat. On classic Amigas I tend to use um, AMIRC or AMIRC depending on how you want to pronounce it. So I've got a few of my favorite IRC haunts here. We can click connect. Uh, and now we're on the English Amiga board um, server here. If you're thinking it looks a bit familiar actually, if you've ever used XChat on uh, Windows or Linux, this was really the inspiration behind XChat, this client here. So you can see the buttons on the, uh, the bottom right there and the kind of layout of these icons at the top, they'll all look very familiar to XChat users. Uh, so we're connected to an IRC server, server here. I can say hello. Um, probably not anyone around this time of day, as uh, in the UK at half past four in the afternoon, most people are probably at work by now. But bearing in mind, we're, you know, the Amiga's a multitasking machine. I can pull that down. You know, we've still got the web browser running here in a, in a separate window. You know, I can still shut in the IRC window. We've still got the FTP running behind it. All this is going on at once. Uh, and we're using around uh, about 10 megabytes here with all of these loaded up, so that is pretty cool. Now, if we want to get, um, I can show you actually NewsRog here, which is a Usenet client. Um, I'm connected to Astronet here. So, uh, I mean, it's quite a nice reader, really. It's, uh, what can I show you? Put it online. As I mentioned before, you know, Usenet these days is really, uh, you know, there's not a lot of conversations go on in most of the forums anymore. Uh, it's really, you know, mainly spam in most of them. But here you go, you know, it's quite a nice user group reader if you want to get kind of an authentic feel. There are newer versions as well, and there are newer clients that you can get for Amiga OS, including uh, News Coaster. But I kind of like NewsRog, so it gives you this kind of tool config bar, uh, cool, cool config bar at the top there. Now, if we want to get really old school, uh, we'll have to get into Telnet, won't we? So, uh, let's find my... DC Telnet is the program that I mainly use for Telnet. Now, we're talking like proper old school bulletin board style here. If I go to my address book, this can work over TCP stacks as well. As you can see, you know, it's recognised that I've got AMI TCP there. Let's check my address book. Uh, here's one here. So this is Telehack, this is kind of fun. Um, and this is really, you know, if you're an old school BBS fan, you'll get quite a lot of fun from this. We'll try running Elisa. You might remember that, it was kind of rudimentary artificial intelligence. So there we go, hello, I'm Elisa. Hello. What seems to be your problem? My videos suck. Hey, let go, man. There we go. Good advice. Thank you. <laughs> so there we go. I mean, that was uh, 
originally, I think it's from the late 70s, early 80s, actually. Uh, we'll try a different one quickly. Uh, what else have we got in here? What's Marvin? Oh, this is the uh, bastard operator from Hell Excuse server. <laughs> Literally, you log on, it'll give you a random excuse for the day. The new frame relay network hasn't been bedded down uh, the software loop transmitter yet. There we go. I'm sure if we reconnect, it'll probably give me a new one. There we go, yeah. That's kind of a bit of a giggle. Uh, we've got a library here, by the looks of it. Oh, here we go. Log in. What should we try? Guest. Password. Password. Oh, didn't work. Guess, guess, maybe? Nope. Should have one more go? Joshua. It does feel a bit like war games when you're in a telnet. Nope, no idea on that one. Uh, you obviously don't want me to get into that. Uh, what else should we try? It's this one here. Uh, running on SunOS, this one, a community network. Okay, what else have we got? Let's go through these dead fast. I mean, you get the idea if you've used Telnet before. Uh... Oh. Some badly corrupted ANSI graphics. Obviously, I haven't got my Telnet client set up correctly for those. Uh, what else have we got in here? Address book. Try the last one. Russian BBS. I'm quite intrigued. It's been a while since I used it. Running on OS2, this one apparently. Uh, we'll be guessed. Password. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Hit the key. Would you like to search for new messages? Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Some new email there. Or adverts, these are actually. There are the new messages that are on this bulletin board. So there you go, I mean, for that real kind of old school feeling, you can't beat, you know, jumping into Telnet and uh, kind of experiencing experiencing it as we did back in the day. Uh, we've got Yam, which is an email client. Um, it's actually a really good one as well, and it's still developed. It was done by a guy called Marcel Beck, I believe it was, back in the 90s. Um, it's gone open source since then. There are still nightly builds of Yam that are released on a regular basis. Uh... So we're looking at the 68K version here. So uh, I haven't got it configured, actually. I need to redo that. But as you can see, we've got all the uh, usual buttons up here. Read, you know, fetch, all of that. So we'll come out of that quickly. What else can I show you quickly in here? Uh, yeah, we've got an ICQ client, if anyone still uses ICQ. If that even works, there we are. I think last time I logged into ICQ was probably about 10 years ago. Um, I think my name, my handle started with like 958100. They weren't the easiest numbers to remember, were they? Uh, what else can I show you in here? Um, yeah, we've got AWeb another. We've got eyebrows open there. AWeb is an open source Amiga web browser these days. Latest version came out about 2007. Again, you know, you've got the limitations that you've got with eyebrows as well. There's no... Uh, CSS or anything like that. And AWeb actually uses data types to uh, do its image decoding, which means it doesn't do any progressive loading, as you'll see the kind of it, the pages jump around a bit as it loads them. But you know, AWeb or Eyebrows either do the job. The thing about Eyebrows is um, it's not available to buy anymore, um, and they won't accept registration. So usually you'll only be able to download a version of this that only runs for like 30 minutes, which is a bit annoying. Um, but there are key files floating around the web. I'm sure a bit of a, a bit of smart googling would find that for you. As you can see, there by using data types, a web is quite a bit slower than uh, than eyebrows. So you get the idea, though. We'll come out of that. I can actually show you what. Um, What eyebrows would look like running in one of the high GFX modes that I showed you a minute ago. Um, so if we change the uh, screen mode quickly, because it looks a bit more modern, you can fit you know the whole web page onto the uh, onto the display then as well. So we're opening up the uh, settings for Magic User Interface here. So we'll call the inspector up. Uh, we'll change the screen mode in here. We'll put it on that one. Okay. 
Okay, flip back to there, we'll use that. And we'll have to quickly flip back over to the Indivision output. Now you might be asking, why do, not, do I not use Indivision all the time? Why have I got the RGB on? It's because, um, if you look at PAL screens on it, there is no config tool that's been released yet for the uh, for the Indivision, so I can't center those screens. But here we go, if we look at the uh, the eyebrows display now that's currently running in the high GFX screen mode. It doesn't really affect the speed all that much either. So, I mean, you can see the whole web page there. That's not bad at all, actually. So, if you've got an Indivision, surfing the web, using it is actually kind of fun. And downloading games as well for the... Uh, the classic Amiga can all be done via eyebrows. You know, I've got a big collection of games that I've showed in some of my other videos uh, on here. Um, if we flip back to the workbench on iGame here. All of these games here on this list have all been downloaded from a website called uh, whdownload.com, um, which I think I've got in my bookmarks at the top here. Um, or maybe I haven't. <laughs> I think I remember the address. It's uh, whdownload.com. And you can download the, uh, you know, there's a big selection of games on here as well that you can download the uh, installers and everything directly onto your Amiga. So again, for convenience, you haven't got to swap, you know, between other machines and anything like that on your network. Um, or if you're downloading torrents and things, you can just FTP them straight over to your Amiga from another machine on the network. So there you go. Uh, there's also stuff like Samba and uh, stuff like that. You can get the Amiga onto your local area network to do file transfers if you wanted to. So it is. just for, Even if it's for nostalgia's sake and a bit of bit of a novelty, getting your Amiga online is kind of fun. Now, I'll quickly show you um, some of the internet software that we've got on uh, next generation Amigas as well. Okay, now we're looking at the workbench on my Amiga 1 XE, um, running the latest Amiga OS 4.1. Uh, update 6. Uh, as you can see at the top here, I've got Newsrog, which was the uh, Usenet client that I use on my OS4 machine. Um, that runs just perfectly well under OS4. Uh, Yam as well, the email client. The uh, native PowerPC build of that. Uh, we can run that on the workbench screen with us having a lot more real estate and obviously, you know, high resolution and full color display on here. So, and it also takes advantage of the new additions to the OS like notification pop-ups. Uh, Sabre MSN, which is an MSN client, which I'm not sure how long it's going to be useful for though, as I've heard that Microsoft are closing down MSN in a couple of weeks time, um, in March I think, but until then it works just fine. I'm not sure what will happen when they migrate everybody over to Skype. Uh, we've also got Amipodder on here as well. Now I'm a big fan of Leo Laporte, the This Week in Tech podcast, so we can update his RSS feed. Just processing it down there. As you can see, the latest podcasts are down there. We can click them, click download, and it will download that with uh, wget or wget uh, into my audio drawer that I've got here. And these are all my podcasts in here, so if I want to play that one, there we go. If I do that, is Windows 8... So we've got, yeah, podcast capture. That's, uh, that's quite a nice little program. Uh, we've also got an IRC client called WookieChat for OS4. Now the uh, AMERC or AMIRC or however you pronounce it, I've never known, is also available for OS4 as well. Um, I'll show you that in my internet drawer here. Uh, if I can find it. There we go. But the, um, so here it is. It's, uh, you know, the same program that I run on my OS3 machine, and uh, AMOC is actually open source now as well, uh, version 3.13. I'll give you a download link in the description, so that's completely free to get there. Uh, I prefer WookieChat for OS4 and more for so, uh, for the simple fact that you can connect to multiple servers all at once in the same window. So as you can see, I'm connected to about three or four different IRC clients here, so you can just click between them. Um, I find it a little bit resource heavy for my Amiga 1200 though, so I tend to stick with AMOC for my old Amigas. Uh, we've got Nash as well, which is a flash player that only plays um, SWV files though. It's, uh, it doesn't embed in the web browser. That'll show you in a minute. Uh, Transmission, that is a 
BitTorrent client. So I can show you the downloads in the dock down there. Um, I won't show you that though. Uh, CTorrent, that is another one as well. That's pretty similar. You have to give it the torrent file, then it will download that. Jabberwocky here too. Um, I need to update some libraries for that to work. Uh, what else have we got in here? Ami Twitter. So yeah, we've got a Twitter client for, uh, again, that I haven't tested out, but if I get the libraries, that'll work fine. Uh, what's Amster? Oh, it's an old Napster program. Um, yeah, does anyone really use Napster anymore? But yeah, it works in OS4. Uh, now the main thing is uh, obviously uh, the web browser. I'll show you quickly Ami Trade Center that I showed you on my last machine. Works under OS4 as well, so we can transfer from FTP just fine. Now, uh, the web browser that we've got on OS4, there are a few of them. The uh, My favorite these days is uh, OWB. Now, this is a version of OWB that is a port of the uh, of version 1.9 from Morphos. It's got the nickname MUI OWB on OS4. And it's a fully featured um, CSS capable JavaScript enabled web browser. So, uh, you know, you can go on modern websites like we'll click on the, the Hack5 one here, which is quite graphically heavy. As you can see, it's uh, loads of all the elements of the page just fine. If we give it a minute to load up all this uh, stuff it's got going on in the middle here, it's obviously some widget it's got going on. Flip back to that one. That's a page I've shown you before. So, you know, it lines up just fine in here. Oh, it's a Flash client there. See, that's obviously a Flash video that won't play in here. Um, that maybe wasn't the best website to show off. <laughs> so find a different one. Let's try Lemon Amiga. There we go. That'll work just fine in here, as you can see. You know, and browser forums in there too. As I did say, there is no Flash. So anything that's kind of stuck in the past and still uses Flash, you're not going to be able to look at. But, you know, you couldn't on an iPad or an iPhone or anything like that either. Uh, if you dare hang out on 4chan, <laughs> scraping the depths of the internet here, um, yeah, that'll that'll show just fine on here too. So you know, modern web pages, it's you know ones like 4chan that are very image heavy, they'll show just fine in here. So you know, I can go down through it. So yeah, I think you know, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of um, Mui OWB. I, the Morphos version is actually more fully featured, and it's got stuff like HTML5 video playing enabled in it, which uh, this version hasn't just yet, but I'm sure it will be coming when they, uh, the porters eventually get round to updating it. I think he's been busy with um, another project recently, but I've heard he is coming back to it. So uh, yeah, that's Mui OWB. Um, the old Amiga um, browsers will actually still work fine on OS4, like iBrowse, that I showed you on my Amiga 1200, with the same limitations, there's no CSS or anything like that, so, but you know, they work just fine. If you wanted that authentic feel, um, an A web as well. I've got A web for PowerPC on here too. So there we go. If we do, for example, uh, Amiga World .net, and we're using PowerPC data type, so it, it will load a lot faster than the uh, the OS four sixty eight K version. So they're both running there. So that's a bit of the uh, Amiga software uh, for going online, Amiga online software that I use on OS4. And uh, we've also got the, um, you know, I showed you that Telnet client on my other machine. I've got it in here as well. That works fine on the uh, on the NG Amigas too. So if you fancy a bit of a uh, bulletin board Telnetting, that'll work just fine on here as well. All right, now we're looking at the ambient desktop on my MorphOS machine. Now, one thing you'll find is um, a lot of the software I've showed you already will be available on all Amiga-like platforms, you know, OS3, OS4, MorphOS, AROS, uh, like the um, Ami Podder I showed you, the podcast catcher, you know, you can get that on MorphOS as well. It's been ported to this and it works exactly the same. Um, also, the Ami Trade Center FTP client, you know, that's on here too. Um, and they all work identically, you know, there's not really much difference between it. But when possible, I do actually like to use um, alternative pieces of software on my different machines, just for a bit of variety, really. So you can get Sabre MSN on uh, MorphOS, but I rather use Polyglot for MSN chatting, uh, which is a native MorphOS uh, only client, I think. Um, looks a little bit more modern as well than Sabre, I think. You know, the clients are, you know, the smileys are quite nice on this client, so 
There we go. Also, Simple Mail, which is available on all Amiga-like systems, um, as well as Yam. I mean, you can get Yam for uh, Morph OS, and you can get Simple Mail for Amiga OS as well. Uh, but for variety's sake, I tend to use Simple Mail on here. And you've got HTML email support in this as well, which is quite cool. Uh, what else can I show you? Yeah, I've got Wookie Chat open on here as well for IRC chat. So, you know, as you can see, it's... Uh, Looks pretty much identical to how it does in OS 4. Just been uh, ported over to uh, Morph OS. And uh, we've got a radio playing software for this as well, which is available on Amiga OS, Aminet Radio. So if I click play there, it should start streaming whatever I had on last. Probably twit.am again. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I haven't got my speakers turned on, but yeah, you get the idea. Uh, now, the main advantage that Morph OS has over the other Amiga variants is that it's got a much more modern web browser. Now, I showed you the uh, port of OWB that I was running on uh, on my Amiga 1 machine. Now, that is actually a port of Odyssey Web Browser version 1.9. Now, on Morph OS, it's up to version 1.18. So, there's a lot of speed improvements. You know, there's a lot of new features. JavaScript's been significantly improved. And the main advantage is that you can play HTML5 videos directly within the browser, like uh, this old Amiga history video that we've got here. If I press play, um, give it a moment to buffer, there you go, you'll see that it's playing from directly within OWB, which is something that you can't do on Amiga OS just yet, so that's definitely one advantage that we've got with Morph OS. And whose video is that one there? Looks familiar. Uh, so there you go, I mean, there's not really a lot else to show you on Morph OS that I haven't already on the others, but Suffice to say, you can pretty much do anything on Morph OS that you can on Amiga OS 4. Uh, I think if I just check my uh, network directory quickly, there's nothing I haven't shown you. Uh, I can probably show you the Twitter client actually on this. I think it's working on here. There we go. So you can tweet directly, check, check your timeline as well. If I was to log in, which I haven't, but yeah, I need to log it in. But there you go. I mean, we've got a Twitter client on it too. So there you go then, a little introduction into the world of uh, getting online with an Amiga. Um, if, you know, for no other reason than pure novelty, I do actually enjoy getting online with my Amiga 1200 and chatting on IRC and uh, trying out Telnet as well. I mean, it's kind of a bit of an authentic feel using the real hardware. Um, I mean, there will be people that will comment on this video, no doubt, and they'll be like, why would you bother, you know, buy a Mac or use Windows 8 or something like that. You know, I have got modern machines and you know, for watching YouTube and stuff like that and general day-to-day -day web browsing, it is probably more, in, you know, efficient doing it on a more modern-day machine. But OS 4 and Morph OS are just perfectly fine for day-to-day -day browsing. Using the old hardware, you know, it's probably more useful for transferring files to your machine, I'd say. If you want to download stuff from Aminet or transfer games and that, for example, onto your Amiga, um, rather than having to download them on another machine and move them over, for the sake of a couple of quid for a network card, I think, you know, that kind of pays for itself. After you've done a couple of trips across the room, you know, with combat flashcards, you soon get sick of doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put um, a link to as many programs that I've featured in this video in the video description below. If you've got any questions at all, uh, feel free to ask and uh, follow me on Google+. Plus. I'll put my link to that and my Twitter in the description as well. Lots to take in there. Uh, and I'll see you again soon.